हेलो हेलो माइक टेस्टिंग व्हाट दिस इवेंट हेलो
sharing card in our Facebook. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, okay. So, so my video on Raju, sir. Yeah, just one minute, huh? Ah. Yeah. Drasti ne karayi, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, karo, sir. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we can wait for just two, three minutes because uh, there are some participants joining.
Okay, we can start now. Yes. <clears throat> Good evening uh, to all uh, my colleagues and participants and uh, good morning to all speakers those are alumni speakers and all six uh, students have been uh, working in usa maybe they are doing some uh, something like ms or phd and few are working there so i and professor snigda kuntia is going to moderate this meeting so uh, i will request uh, uh, before that i would like to tell you that Ahmedabad University uh, and the School of Engineering and Applied Science has four engineering programs, BTEC in Chemical Engineering, BTEC in Computer Science and Engineering, then BTEC in Electronics and Electrical Engineering, and fourth one is BTEC in Mechanical Engineering. And we have started the webinar series, and this is the first webinar. So that is uh, related to chemical engineering. And the title of this something like Beyond Boundaries, Diverse Alumni Journeys in Chemical Engineering. So, uh, Professor Snigda, I think you can just go ahead with the introduction of all these uh, six alumni. Okay, thank you all for joining. So, we have uh, selected and we could connect uh, many more, but now these are the first batch of our uh, webinar uh, uh, alumni students who have uh, joined us. Then uh, let's first uh, talk about our first two speakers who are from class of 2018, who are our first batch of students of chemical engineering, Mr. Amish Chavatia, who is right now doing her, his PhD at uh, University of Notre Dame. Then there is uh, Ms. Disha Ravi Petpati. She's also from class of 2018. And right now she's working uh, in as a model development engineer at Intel. Then from class of 19, we have Ms. Priyanka Shukla, who is right now doing her PhD at University of Pittsburgh. Then from 2019, we have Zangrut Vyas, also doing PhD from Rutgers University. Our next set of uh, speakers are uh, uh, Drashti Dave from class of 2020. She is right now working in machine learning uh, as a machine learning engineer at Cyber Dive Company. And Mr. Shagar, Sagar Shah from batch of 2022 doing his uh, master's at Purdue University. So welcome all of you our uh, uh, graduated students and we are eager to know more about you, your journey, so that, uh, you know, we can uh, pass on the message. What is the uh, theme of today's uh, discussion is actually beyond boundaries. So to break the boundaries and get to uh, learn more that how you guys have, you know, uh, come across in your entire career till now and how much chemical engineers or how the chemical engineering field have helped you to go through this path. So welcome you all. Yeah, Let's uh, begin and yeah I'll thank hand you, over thank to you. So, so uh, my, my uh, first question is, uh, uh, we can start from the Amish. Uh, would you tell us about uh, your journey from BTEC in chemical engineering to uh, till now what uh, you are doing PhD? So accordingly, the other other speakers can just tell us about the their journey from BTEC chemical engineering to till date, uh, what uh, whatever they are doing right now. Sure. Uh, thank you for the nice introduction and hi everyone. Uh, great to see everyone here. Um, so when I graduated, uh, with a bachelor's in chemical engineering, uh. I basically wanted to get a more research focused um, degree basically and uh, I moved on to do a master's in chemical engineering at uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon University uh, where I first really got introduced to um, using computational simulations for uh, various kinds of research and basically liked using computers in my work and uh, developed my fundamental understanding of how people use such kind of tools 
And as a result, I uh, got an internship at uh, a company called Intermolecular, which is acquired by EMD Electronics now. Um, there, uh, I worked on uh, using simulation tools to develop semiconductor materials. And that was a really nice uh, experience, but at the same time, I was a little more inclined towards um, more of the core chemical engineering related applications for, uh, for computational work and wanted to get a little more into doing independent research. So decided to go for a PhD after a year um, and basically landed at a University of Notre Dame where I use computational simulations to understand uh, reactions that are very relevant to a catalytic converter in your car, for example. Um, so yeah, that's that's my journey in short. Yeah, good. Disha, uh, would you tell us? Um, hi, everyone. I am Disha, and I have been working at uh, Intel Corporation since past one year. Uh, I have been working as a module development engineer. Um, so my idea um, of uh, my undergrad, like initially before joining Ahmedabad University, I always wanted to pursue a career in a core branch um, and then see where it went. And then I joined Ahmedabad University back in 2014. Um, those four years uh, at AU, uh, it kind of uh, uh, helped me grow in a way that I got to know a lot about uh, how a core industry works. And uh, with, that is, uh, with that, I also got the exposure to uh, the research part of it. So uh, during my undergrad, I um, collaborated with IIT Bombay and we were working on some nanoparticles. And then further after that, uh, that sort of intrigued interest in me uh, about research. And uh, I was, as my uh, final year project, uh, I was working with a lot of simulation tools. Uh, which gave me uh, an exposure about how um, these particular tools work and uh, how simulations in industries work. And then after that, for two years, I was uh, researching um, at Ahmedabad University um, under the guidance of uh, Dr. Sridhar Dalai. And then uh, that sort of uh, gave me an inspiration to study more and that's how I ended up pursuing my master's degree in chemical engineering at State University of New York at Buffalo. Um, during my uh, graduate studies at uh, Buffalo, um, I got exposure to um, the research related to uh, batteries. Um, and then to see how an industry actually works, um, I, I ended up applying for internships. So uh, back in 2022 summer, I was interning uh, at Intel. And then I saw uh, how a tech industry, how a chemical engineer can fit in a tech industry. And uh, that was quite interesting that everything, when you, like, when you think of a chemical engineer in a tech industry, you would think, what would they do there, right? Uh, but um, what we do with our chemical engineering knowledge is uh, the chip that you get in your computers, your laptops, right? So we work in sort of uh, fabrication of those. So that was quite interesting. And I ended up joining Intel Corporation after that. Okay. Drashti, are you able to speak? Yeah. So uh, Drashti is not well, but she has joined. Yeah, if you are able to speak, then. Yeah, I will try to speak. Uh, I will start with my journey, like from 2016, when I completed my 12th standard. So um, I didn't explore much before uh, joining chemical engineering stream. But once I entered into my chemical engineering program, I wanted to explore every aspect of it. 
and I did so by getting into internships from the very first summer vacation that we had. So I did my internship in IFCO, which is a fertilizer company. I did my internship in Reliance, which is petrochemical industry. I also did internship in J Chemicals, which is a tie company, uh, and also at a company which was producing specialty chemicals. Then I realized that I want to get into an uh, internship uh, in a company that designs chemical plants. So uh, I did my final uh, third year internship in Engineers India Limited. And in my final year, I did my BTEC project at IIT Gandhinagar, Gandhinagar which was entirely lab-based experience, which was part of the project-based learning at Ahmedabad University. Then I did my master's from Carnegie Mellon University and found a new side of chemical engineering, that is the computational side. In all our coursework, we were taught how to use simulations and Python codes to solve chemical engineering problems and got introduced to machine learning and AI for chemical engineering. I developed my interest in AI and pursued my career in this field after my master's degree. So throughout my undergraduate degree, I explored many diverse career opportunities in chemical engineering with the help of amazing faculty here at Ahmedabad University. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Priyanka? Hello, hi everyone. Um, even I have a sore throat, but it's okay. Um, yeah, so I am Priyanka Shukla. Um, I graduated in 2019 uh, from Ahmedabad University and the experience has been great at uh, Ahmedabad University. Um, so when, when I started as an undergrad student, uh, we got to uh, know about a lot of chemical engineering projects and like how the core courses work and how you can directly apply these core courses to the undergraduate research project which you can apply uh, while you, during your uh, bachelor's degree. Um, so, so I was under, a cons like, I had a great guidance from Professor Dharamshi Rabari, and he has been a great mentor throughout my th journey. And also, he was the one who spiked my interest in the research career that I am at this point. So uh, in my undergrad, I it was not just about using chemical, core chemical courses, um, but I also got to use computational stuff where um, where I was using the resources available at Ahmedabad University to do computational chemistry and study how to decarbonize the, um, the CO, or how to red, uh, basically reduce CO2 in uh, using some ionic liquid. So those were the projects uh, that I got to do computationally, and that that excited me. And and then uh, another guidance from my mentors at Ahmedabad University was to um, like pursue higher studies, and that's how I decided to go for masters. Um, and I joined as a master student at the University of Pittsburgh, and the journey has been great since then. Uh, I'm I am right now a PhD student at the University of Pittsburgh and my research interest aligns in uh, using computational chemistry stuff uh, to solve real life problems such as adsorption, diffusion of important chemicals uh, or how to destruct chemical warfare agents using uh, nanoparticles. So that, that's, that has been my journey for masters. And right now I am more into scientific software developer part of quantum mechanics where I am building he, like I'm testing theories developed by physicists and um, also making it more applicable to other uh, chemical engineering aspects. So so my journey has been uh, more on um, these the, the research uh, aligned. It has been more research aligned and the interest was, yeah, interest came because of what uh, Ahmedabad University provided me with the resources. Uh, with the guidance, because I don't think not many people know about you can do computational chemistry 
uh, in your undergrad because the resources are not available. So just the right guidance can give you a proper career path. Um, and I was blessed with that. And right now I have an internship opportunity for May summer um, as a scientific software developer at OpenAI, which is a big company uh, that develops uh, these computational chemistry tools. So yeah, just pick your mentors uh, uh, that and do the projects that they uh, yeah like they have the best interest for you and they can they can help you with your path. Yeah, thank you, thanks Priyanka. Uh, Sagar, you can continue about your journey. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sagar. Currently, I'm pursuing my master's in chemical engineering at Purdue University, where I'm specializing in energy systems and fundamental processes. So talking about why I am currently at this stage of my life is I started my bachelor's in 2018 at Ahmedabad University in chemical engineering. So during my first year, I, we were having this curriculum where we were exploring all the different paths and and all the different all the different subjects of uh, in the engineering that are currently included. And uh, also, like after my first year, I did my internship to find what what interests me the most. And so I was I was just about exploring all the fields that were there in chemical engineering. So I started up like I ended up in my my first summer at uh, the Green Environment Cooperative Society. That's a common effluent treatment plant plant in Watwa. So that gave me an exposure about how the, actually a big chemical industry or big ETP plant works. And after that, in second, like I am in the I was in the batch where my max two years were spent in covid and in also covid I got an opportunity to work with Professor Rabari and. Uh, in the field of deep eutectic solvents and which also gave me an interest that okay i also like working into r d sector whereas i want to also focus into industry and in my final year project i was working under with uh, professor professor aditi and it was a collaborative project in between iit gandhinagar as well where we were working on to onto the catalyst materials that are used for hydrogen production and that was something that interested me the most and which uh, gave me an option okay i can i want to pursue my career in this field and due to which i decided to do my masters and currently in my masters i'm focusing into uh, electrochemical devices like specifically into green hydrogen production and carbon capture and other than that uh, other than studies at Ahmedabad university the most exciting thing that i found and which helped me to connect to the world was uh, a student chapter AICHE. And in that chapter, we got this opportunity to connect with the students from all over the world. And we got opportunities to participate into the competitions and the conferences. And we were able to compete uh, across the globe. And also we got an exposure about how, how the students in other universities are working on and what kind of exposure they have. And uh, I would be like, I can say that, okay, the exposure that Ahmedabad University gives you in your bachelor's is something that uh, in some of the universities in US or in some other part of the world, like it's one of the, I would say, most, uh, one of the advanced curriculum as well. And also you get this opportunity to work in one of the most recent recent and fields that are currently going on. And so uh, studying at Ahmedabad University helped me a lot and it helped me to decide as well what I want to do. And it also helped me to find the right concentration, I would say, in which I wanted to study and the exposure in the other student activities and student clubs also gave me and gave me an opportunity to be to interact with public and to interact with your peer students who are not from your main domain and helps you to convey your story. That's also one of the important skills that uh, one should have. So throughout my journey, it was great at Ahmedabad University. Yeah, Jankrut, uh, uh, you can just conclude uh, with your journey. Yes. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Sankrut. So I came from not English medium high schooling and then joining a university was like a task for me. So I didn't think that oh uh, like which discipline i want to go to i was like i want to do something different than what everyone does so i just took admission in 
chemical engineering. Uh, after that, I spent one year, two year, just just knowing the chemical engineering and uh, finding out different parts that I can work with. And then in the second year, uh, summer, I believe, I did an internship at IIT Gandhi Nagar, uh, where I worked with a PhD student of a, of a professor who are working with a pharmaceutical company, Torrent Pharma, that's somewhere in the uh, Ahmedabad uh, area. So then uh, I got to know, oh, chemical engineering has like a pharma side. And then I found out, oh, chemical engineering is not just chemical stuff and chemistry stuff, but it has pharma, energy, nanotech, environment, materials, and what my other peers here said already, all the cool stuff. So uh, then I thought that, okay, uh, this pharma stuff seems interesting to me. So I finished my internship, uh, I came back, I took guidance from my professor at the, at the AU and uh, got another internship opportunity at, at Reliance uh, to see how like the other sector of chemical engineering, you know, works. Uh, so after guidance, uh, I gained more knowledge about how, about the different areas, about the research work I can do. And then I decided to join PhD program, but I didn't apply for PhD. I applied for a master's because I thought, oh, nobody will give me PhD uh, admission. Um, because in India, it's, it's not like that. You have to do master's. But I didn't know that in USA, you can just do PhD. So anyways, I applied for master's and then uh, transferred to PhD. And luckily I found a very big research group here at Rutgers University uh, that works with continuous pharmaceutical manufacturing. We basically see how the tablets are made, uh, the tablets that everyone is familiar with, like Crocin, if you say, for example, the normal painkiller uh, or cold medicine. So it seems very tiny and uh, cute little tablet, but it takes a lot to make that one tablet. And I joined the research for that. Uh, so now I'm working with the professor here uh, to figure out the best way to manufacture tablets. Uh, yeah, that's my journey in like a minute. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, Snig uh, Professor Snigda, you are muted. Yeah, so uh, thank you all speakers to share your wonderful journey starting from Ahmedabad University till your master's and current job profiles. But we want to know more that what are the courses or how what is the uh, academic uh, help did, that you got from Ahmedabad university for uh, more about we want to know more about what are the courses and how did they help you to get through your uh, higher studies and even now those who are doing uh, jobs at various you know big companies and whether still you're using those courses in your work or not I can take yeah. that up. Yeah. So a lot of courses that we studied at, at Ahmedabad University, um, uh, initially everybody thinks that, oh my God, these courses, um, you know, are so hectic and so tough. And are we even going to use it in real life? But let me tell you one thing. Uh, I am still using a lot of courses which I studied and a lot of knowledge that I gained be it heat transfer, be it thermodynamics, be it uh, chemical process technology, which was a course uh, which uh, taught us about uh, how industries actually work. And uh, there were courses on equipment design. So I myself currently work as a module development engineer where uh, we get a lot of equipments which we qualify for whatever processes we use. So a lot of that knowledge um, uh, I have uh, carried from my undergrad, which kind of helped me uh, to understand things very easily. That is one. Second is uh, a knowledge from courses, yes, but uh, the knowledge that I gained from the research that I did at AU was quite helpful as well. 
um it gave me an exposure to um a uh, nanotechnology like how things work at nano scale uh, which helped me immensely during my masters research as well and um, even the research that i did back in my undergrad um i uh, wrote uh, uh a couple of uh, research papers along with uh, a few peers under the guidance of dr shridhar dalai and uh, those research papers and the research i did later uh, helped me as well so yeah somebody else can share their journey in yes i can also add to that the courses that I learned uh, some of the core chemical engineering courses that turned out to be core courses in general and like any field that applies. Uh, I I can name one like mass transfer that I use a lot and uh, process optimization and technology, something, something. Uh, I, I forgot the course name, but that's the gist of it. So those two courses are still with me because I, I work in manufacturing side and then there's mass and process and then everything. So yeah, that helps a lot. Um, the understanding of the courses and finding out how you can apply the knowledge. And uh, of course, it, those courses are the foundation of my knowledge that I have. Other than that, the opportunity uh, that uh, I was provided with uh, about the internship at I think Andinagar, uh, there was one professor uh, in AU, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Deepak Pundru. He helped immensely in everything uh, during the internship, after the internship, before the internship, and also answering the the all the questions that uh, you know we asked. So yeah, the guidance has been really good and the courses are actually helpful even though they seem boring and stupid at the time okay so one more question added to that uh like before joining chemical engineering or for any person who is not familiar with chemical engineering the thing that it is more about chemistry now that all of you have graduated what is your take on that perception that chemistry is chem equivalent to chemical engineering or vice versa um maybe i can start and then someone can join in um so for me interestingly I, I I literally thought like, okay, like I'm good at chemistry, so I can take chemical engineering. So I think there are numerous people out there that think that way, like you need to be good at chemistry so that you can be a good chemical engineer. Uh, in five years, I found out that it's not just chemistry, like it's just a teeny tiny part of your entire career. Um, yeah, you can know about these organic molecules and stuff like that, but it it doesn't matter, right? You learn along the way. For you, what what's the key takeaway is that you should be good at math because you, you are going to use math in, in all engineering aspect, chemical engineering aspect. Um, and along the way, you learn about, okay, it's not just about working in plants, which was the title of this webinar, right? Um, we all started as like learning about process optimization, process control, integration of heat transfer and things like that, um, which people might, they are, they are interested in all um, uh, like, like yeah, plant opportunities out there. Uh, but if you're interested in going for like higher studies, um, there you can diversify your chemical engineering into very different aspects uh, of job profile. So you can be, uh, like like how Disha is right now working with semiconductors. She, uh, I am a computational chemistry scientist. Uh, Zangrut is a pharma. So there are a lot of opportunities just by learning the core courses uh, being taught in the bachelor's. And then just, just diversify your uh, learning from bachelor's to different, different uh, fields. And the opportunities are numerous and all of us can talk about different things. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, it's not just about chemistry, like just start, okay, maybe 
ten percent of it, but the rest is how what what you learn in the core courses. It's about plants. It's about R and D. It's about uh, software develop and other things. Yeah. Yeah, Amish, you want to add something? Sure. Yeah. Um, I will share a little incident or an anecdote, so to say. Um, so here at uh, University of Notre Dame, my advisor conducts a course um, that is basically for career guidance to uh, undergrad students. And we had an alumnus of uh, University of Notre Dame who said that chemical engineers can basically do anything. The reason is uh, when you go through the chemical engineering course, you basically develop your analytical and mathematical uh, skills. And what it teaches you is basically how to break down a problem into simpler parts and work through uh, those parts to uh, basically solve any kind of problem. So if you find uh, your interest to be more aligned towards, let's say statistics and calculus, you will probably um, go towards what Drasti is right now in data science and uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, et cetera. Um, if your uh, expertise tends to be more towards uh, looking at a uh, looking at the economics of a process or looking at um, how to get something done in a real uh, um, economic scenario, you can go towards more uh, of a process systems level um, uh, area. And then if you are more inclined towards how individual processes work at a microscopic level, you can do something that me and Priyanka do, um, basically uh, studying things at very fundamental uh, levels. And then basically uh, pick something that interests you or you will be able to identify something that uh, interests you towards uh, or during your undergrad journey. And um, that will probably lead you towards uh, a career path that you uh, will develop. And you have plenty of guidance available at Ahmedabad University from really well qualified and really uh, interactive faculty that you um, will interact with at Ahmedabad University. Yeah, uh, so you, you have mentioned about Drashti, but I have one specific question for Drashti. So she did uh, her B.Tech in chemical engineering as well as M.S. in chemical engineering from CMU. And now uh, she is working uh, in one industry as machine learning engineer. So my question is something like, uh, so whatever courses you have studied at uh, during your BTEC, during your MS, how these courses were helpful to get these? I, I don't know, means the, how those courses, the learning from those courses can be related with the present job uh, or roles of the present job. Yeah, so working as machine learning engineer uh, was majorly influenced by all the courses and algorithms that I learned during my master's degree. But the learnings that I got from Ahmedabad University laid a foundation for that. So we did had courses related to coding, uh, which were, I guess, in Python and C. Uh, right now, uh, uh, MATLAB and C. Right now I use Python, but still all the foundation and all the basic <clears throat> concepts were introduced during those courses. Okay. Yeah. Sagar, mm -hmm. do, you, do you want to add anything? Uh, Ms. The, whatever, uh, what, uh, whatever you have studied uh, during your BTEC, how uh, the, the learning from those courses is helpful while uh, you are means the doing ms at Purdue university yes sure so talking about that like we discussed a lot and in depth as well in the core courses but the i would like to talk about the electives that are offered at amdavad university so the the 
the range of electives that are offered is immense and you can find a really good guidance into that courses as well. So some of the elective courses that I took in Ahmedabad University, which right now is uh, like the career path for me and which I want to go into more depth is like one of the course that was offered by Professor Aditi that was into catalysis and catalytic processes. So that gave me an uh, exposure into a side of catalyst and as well as like in my final year project as well, it was related to catalyst, but specifically electrocatalysts that are used for hydrogen production. And that is something like it gave me and developed an interest into electrochemistry. And that gave me, okay, I want to do this as well. And which currently I am focusing on and I am I am thinking about create, uh, creating my path in that field specifically. And some of the other courses, some of the other electives that I took, one was uh, transport phenomena and all the other courses which are currently like over here, those are one of the in most of the curriculum, it's one of the core courses or it is one of the most uh, advanced, uh, I would say, elective that is offered and as well as some of the computational fluid dynamics that also gives you and like at the undergrad level only, it gives you an exposure towards the into modeling simulation as well. And it creates a base for learning more, more simulations and uh, more simulation software softwares as well. So. I would say other than core courses, the electives and the range of electives that were offered that really helped me a lot. And I would say it like the courses that are offered, it it helps a lot, lot of us. And if we, if you see about like other than core courses, there are also branches in chemical engineering that you can explore and the opportunities that you get at Ahmedabad University would be something that you can create your own path of it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I would like to add that apart from uh, electives, we also had independent study period during our time, which was a great interdisciplinary approach incorporated into our courses at AU. So being a chemi student, I was able to take artificial intelligence course at that time. Uh, that also gave me some introduction to what I am working right now. <laughs> Okay, so at Ahmedabad University, uh, students are also uh, kind of encouraged to take uh, courses from School of Biology, School of Management, School of Arts and Science. And somewhere in the new curriculum, there's a kind of uh, fall under uh, mandatory courses also. At beginning, many students also, they, they resist to take those courses saying that it, they're never going to use that. I'm sure you might have also taken one or two or a few courses like that, or maybe you might have forced to take those courses. So my question is, did those courses ever help you maybe during BTEC or maybe whatever you're do doing right now? So are they relevant enough or you may give your honest opinion for that? Uh, I can start with that. So uh, during my BTEC, I did take some of the courses that were, that were into management field and uh, it was related to man uh, engineering management or you can say that in marketing management and all. And currently over here as well, we have a certain credits that are reserved for taking some of the courses that are related to non-core chemical engineering field. And I would say that courses helped me like, okay, I'm not creating or I'm not following that path right now, but it gave me an opportunity to connect with your peers who are not into your engineering field. And it helps you to understand, okay, the knowledge that you have, how you can transfer it to the people who doesn't have that specific background. Because you need to learn that as well, like not only knowing the technical field, you also need to know that how to explain it to someone who is not in your field and how to explain them in the way that they will understand it more easily. So I would say the you know, the electives that were that I took other than the engineering related field helped me a lot develop this specific kind of skills in which I am is I I was able to translate my knowledge into uh, into a layman language I would say that others would easily understand those those who are not into the engineering field. Thank you, Sagar. Anybody wants to add anything? Uh, I can add. So I took 
a management course and one law related course uh, i i forgot the name of both of them but uh, i i just took them for fun at that time i was like okay i want to get away from all the engineering part of my career, of my uh, you know undergrad um and i never used them until like a year or two years ago Uh, because I work with companies and uh, to work with companies, you have deadlines and then you have all the other company bureaucracy that comes with. And it's good to know how the company works. And when I started working with companies and my PhD, all the projects, uh, those courses, like I remember that, oh, oh, they, they taught me in that course. And then I know already like how how the company works like what do they want how do they think you know stuff like that and then there's also some so i'm I'm working on some confidential stuff um uh, that may end up doing like pretty big things and for that particular company i mean it's small for the world but it's just like really big for the company so there are a lot of laws of course laws are different in usa and then in india but some laws are same but like the introduction to the world of management and law that what i got when i was undergrad that's really you know helpful uh i did that by chance but I feel that whatever you learn, it's you're going to use it someday, whether you realize or not, whether you realize it or not. So, yeah. Um, for me, uh, I think I took French and one economics class. And in my independent study period, I took artificial intelligence. So the AI part I'm using a lot right now and the electives which were related to economics, I'm not directly applying them that much, but still they were great in terms of giving me a basic idea of what all different things are out there. And of course, whenever I plan my finances, that comes in handy. And like the French language, it is not directly applicable anywhere, but still it gives me one starting point. Like whenever people out there say that, oh, I know this language, that language, I can start on with, yes, I have learned French, which is a great soft skill for me right now. So in some ways, they always come in handy, all the courses that I did. Okay, Any anybody else want to add something? Okay, so uh, I, I have one more question, something like, uh, would you share any uh, good incident? I, I don't know if it was happened during your BTEC and that motivated you a lot for what you are now. Is there any incident Mr. that was uh, uh, Mr. responsible for your motivation to go for higher studies or whatever uh, you are doing um, in the job right now. So is there any motivated incident during your BTEC journey? I can start. Yes, or sir. Amish, do you want to start? Go ahead. Yeah. So mine is a little unconventional. <laughs> so during the initial couple of years of my undergrad, I did not study much. I was... Uh, I was interested in chemical engineering, but you know, to understand the bigger part of it, to understand what it actually means, it took me a while. And during, I think my fifth semester or sixth semester, uh, I vividly remember um, I was talking to um, Snigdha ma'am and, and uh, Sridhar sir about this. And then they uh, they could see uh, that, okay, I do have potential, what else can I do? Right. And uh, uh, during that period of time, Sridhar sir, uh, I, I wanted to do some research. So he introduced me uh, to a research project. And eventually, uh, after learning about the, the research, I went to IIT Bombay for uh, a brief period of time for doing a research internship, which sort of intrigued my interest into it. And then eventually after that, um, um, I sort of uh, understood the bigger picture 
of uh, chemical engineering and how uh, diverse it is and uh, what are the different things I can look at and what are the different things I can work in. And that sort of laid a foundation for me then. And then during my master's, um, I was working with research very closely and uh, that sort of uh, helped me understand uh, uh, the intricacies of it. And then that's how I ended up uh, even doing a master's or even coming into an industry. So, yeah. Yes, Amish. Yeah, I'll just add um, uh, the student activities that uh, I got to organize slash participate in during uh, my bachelor's. Basically, um, I think I participated in three kinds of uh, major student activities. First one was organizing what we called uh, a science lecture series where we invited uh, scientists or eminent scientists from various fields uh, to uh, give a lecture that would be interesting to not just uh, the engineering students, but all uh, students from all disciplines and uh, even the general public. Uh, so I was involved in organizing that. And then I was involved in organizing uh, what we called um, what we call our annual technology festival. I think that uh, still happens at Ahmedabad University. Uh, Ingenium. Ingenium, right. Yeah, yeah. Ingenium. Yes, uh, which is basically a collection of fun and educational activities um, for uh, engineering students. And finally, I uh, got to basically get together with students and start the student chapter that uh, Sagar mentioned. Um, the AICH or American Institute of Chemical Engineers. That uh, institute is basically a professional network of chemical engineers throughout the world. Um, and we started the student chapter of, uh, of it at Ahmedabad University in, uh, I think it was um, spring of 2018, which was my final semesters uh, there. But Organizing all of these events has helped me build uh, the communication skills and um, the management skills that I have uh, today. Um, everyone who knows me knows that I'm a big introvert and I don't really speak unless I have to. Um, but these kinds of activities uh, help me understand how to speak when you need to basically and um, I'm still continuing uh, with those kind of activities so at University of Notre Dame in my second year I was uh, uh, secretary of the committee that organizes our annual symposium and then in my third year I was the president um, these kinds of things really help you build your personality and build yourself and also network with various kinds of uh, people from all the disciplines. Um, that is one of the highlights that really, really helped me uh, develop during my undergrad. Does anybody want to add anything? I'll I just like remembered... This. Yeah, just a quick. Yeah. I just remembered um an actor in an, uh, a competition we did back uh during our undergrad in Ingenium, where we had to create fuel cells. And that was very interesting, and that sort of uh, intrigued a lot of us. And I think uh, some of our batchmates also got interested in it, uh, like how actually fuel cells work, and uh, a lot of them pursued research in that direction as well. So that was quite helpful. Yes. Yeah, like, yeah, like we, so I remember like just specifically one event where I was really excited about and it was building a rocket propulsion. Rocket propulsion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the, like, there we got to know about like how to talk to vendors, how to get chemicals that you want. And so these, these things you are maybe not taught directly in class, but these are essential skills 
that you develop through organizing events or being a participant in these kind of events uh, yeah so definitely like don't like in your undergrad try to maximize on organizing these kind of events being a participant in these kinds kind of uh, of events and not just focus your work on maybe like core courses and because you'll do great like yeah you have joined chemical engineering you'll get the with the mentorship and the opportunities out there uh, you will definitely excel in your undergrad core courses or research projects but you need to make some extra time for these kind of events uh, where where you will definitely develop your communication skills your leadership leadership skills um yeah these are very important when you go for higher studies or or yeah just joining an industry or being an entrepreneur as well like how to lead your company how to mentor us uh, your team so right now currently like i'm un- mentoring an undergrad and she yeah she is a chemical undergrad so i need to know uh, like i need to know how to simplify the projects in such a way that she can understand that she can be motivated about um and also like my collaborators right so they they are from <clears throat> physics department and i'm a chemical engineer but with these kind of soft skills i am still able to lead the projects very efficiently um and and yeah like i'm getting good output so i think i would just say like just don't focus on your core courses but try to get involved in maximum number of events uh, to develop your soft skills mm-hmm. yeah um, sounds just great just to add to that <laughs> Yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to add to that um like Priyanka said that all the things that we learn during our undergrad be it from the events or be it uh, uh with collaborating uh be it in collaborating with different uh, people uh, from different fields that sort of uh, helped me even in my masters where um i was collaborating with different departments to get my project done uh, but apart from that here at intel as well i work with people from different fields uh, i work with people from electrical engineering computer science engineering i work with people from mechanical material science and i also uh, work with a lot of vendors who work for intel so that sort of uh, you know gives me um like an edge that um now i know how to talk to them how to address address a lot of things and how to even at work how to um get get the root cause analysis by talking so yeah soft skills do definitely help and uh, amdavad university sort of uh, shaped us in a holistic view uh, of uh, how we can work in different environments in diverse fields so yeah thank you disha yeah i can just yeah, yeah. quickly add a little so what everyone said i completely agree with that i just want to add that the curriculum designed uh, at au is really great to learn all that because you are you know encouraged to do internship um, i heard it's mandatory and then at the end of the your degree uh, your last 6 months or last one year going to be some project um, somewhere outside of the university uh, even if it's inside of the university you are collaborating with the people outside of the university so those kind of exposures really provide you because by by that time you know everything about the chemical engineering of like that you're supposed to know but what you don't know is how you apply that uh, to the real world what you're going to do once you are out of the university so the curriculum design the the course every course has project at the end uh, all the internship opportunities and the last year project i think those are very big help in developing a lot of skills yeah thank you so much okay so uh... now that a lot of uh, students after 12th are uh, kind of now curious and somewhere a bit uh, confused and uh, scared also what career path they should choose especially if they are doing btech then what is the discipline they should choose 
so do you want to give some messages to the school kids who are right now kind of rendering what to choose and what not to choose so it's up to you guys i can, I can start with you okay oh, you go okay thanks um so i would just highlight uh, two things one is definitely follow your uh, passion definitely um think about what excites you the most what kinds of problems excite you the most um and second is basically get to know things about different fields so attend this kind of uh, events um reach out to students or faculty of different universities uh in different um disciplines um use linkedin uh, is a great resource to do that and basically don't just go by the name of um the major or an engineering field let's say computer mechanical uh, electrical chemical these are very these names don't do justice to uh, these fields P people in uh, these fields uh, do various kinds of things and the only way you will know about these things is by interacting with them um in general people are very responsive to cold emails so you can just send uh, an email to people who you don't know uh, or a linkedin message or whatever if you don't have their email addresses um but I think it's worth getting to know what actually different fields are before you uh, dive into one. And um, getting a fundamental idea of um, reality is really, really important in my opinion. Yeah, very well said, Amish. Anyone? That's what I wanted to say. Uh, I can add to that that don't make assumptions because uh, when you assume things you don't know if it's correct or not also don't rely on what your other friends tell you or what your parents tell you find out things on your own and and ask the the people who are working in that industry or who are teaching that like Amish said uh send them LinkedIn email, like LinkedIn, LinkedIn text, email, whatever you want to do, but just try to find out things on your own um, and see how how vast is the, you know, the program that you are entering into because the names are, names really don't do justice. There's a lot of it. Thank you, Sankhra. Uh, on that, I would like to just add one more thing. Like if you want to decide what you want to and if you're confused, like you might have something in your mind, okay, over a period of time, I want to become this or I want to be at that specific position. And you know, like, okay, these are some of the few people, like it might be some famous people or someone like that, okay. And you just look into it, how they reached over there and what path they took. And that might help you as well, okay. Okay, if you want to go over there, then this is some for some of the steps that were common in multiple profiles and that will help you. Okay, I need to do this, this, this kind of stuff to reach over there. And so accordingly, you can contact a specific or the people that are currently in that field and you can interact more with them as Amish Bhaiya mentioned. Okay, this is how you inter like you interact with them and you just send a message or send an email there might be a chance it's like 90 percent of the time you won't get a response but from the 10 percent of the response that you get that will help you a lot and accordingly you can shape your career or you can choose a field okay what you want to do yeah just little bit to that i mean everyone covered most of the points but uh so so it's like uh let me just frame it uh so yeah so like you'll build your passion along the way right like if you just make sure that your fundamentals are strong like math physics chemistry right little bit of that will take you to great places um, and don't discard any field or any engineering just by the name like chemical engineering you'll be doing only chemistry no it's not that uh, if you know your core stuff 
uh, you can go ahead and build your passion in that line. You can talk to people and interact with them and find out the opportunities that are out there. Uh, yeah, so I think the most thing important is um, don't go by the name, follow your passion and uh, yeah, do your research, I guess. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'll just add one thing that... Um... Most likely things will change as you move forward in your uh, domain. So, I mean, this is a real world, right? This is not a training for a job. This is education for a career. So when you uh, maybe part way through your chemical engineering, you will realize that, okay, core chemical engineering is not your thing or management is your thing. That's okay. Uh, you can still... Um, I mean, your core uh, knowledge is still going to help you in whatever uh, path you end up taking. But don't be afraid to look around um, at any point in your career and um, follow things that interest you the most. And um, the focus on the problems that you want to uh, solve, basically. Um, things might change along the way and that's totally fine. So don't be afraid of changes. That's that's all I'll say. Okay. Uh, just one thing, like, <laughs> yeah. So what's exciting about chemical engineering is because yeah, I want to brag chemical engineering, why not? Uh, like there are a lot of problems to solve. And if you are into solving problems, real life, problems where you can make impact to the society not to smaller society but to the bigger bigger society i would say like in general like you can build things or I, I i don't want to say destroy things but yeah build things build good things right so you get that power when you become a chemical engineer it's not just like working 24 7 in like not 24 7 but yeah five to nine job it's not a five to nine job but more like after you get your interest, you can you can really make an impact and people will see your impact, people will recognize your impact. So so yeah, that's what I learned in chemical engineering. Like it's not just about uh, doing a job, but actually making an impact through your research, through your entrepreneurship opportunities or any other things that chemical engineering can lead you to. Yeah. Yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, so, uh... I would like to take up the question from the audience. If is the people means the if somebody has any question, please ask. So you can mute yourself, unmute yourself, and then you can ask. Is there any question from the audience? Participants? Okay, I think uh, there is no question. Yeah. Feel free to write a question in chat as well if you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are not write. able to speak, then you can write yeah. in the chat also. Or later on, if any audience or any student want to reach out to us, then they feel free to connect and yeah, yeah, yeah. or an email or, or a phone call also. We are here to answer your doubts. Yeah, I just want to add that don't be afraid to ask. You you have to speak, otherwise people won't know what's going in your mind. And, no question uh, is silly. Yeah, I'm just yeah, adding to that. Exactly. You can just ask anything as basic as, I don't know, what helped you take chemical engineering or anything. Anything is fine. No question is silly. <laughs> I just want to point out one thing that uh, that is this major stereotype that, okay, if you are in chemical engineering, you will be working in plant only or you will be working with the industry. That's not something there. So like if I talk about myself over here, I did a internship for eight months in which I was purely focusing, focused into R&D sector and, you know, checking out the reliability of the system. That's it. So I never stepped into a plant or electrolyzer plant. I was just working into laboratory or, you know, working on the desk and modeling something or doing some process control using some of the tools and all. So it's not like you will be always working into a chemical plant as well. Like uh, there are multiple options other than working into or 
into plant or you are like there is this thing okay if you are an engineer or if you are specifically a chemical engineer you will be standing in a plant wearing a hat and having a notepad in your hand and writing something that's not something actually like it's also a field that many engineers do but it's not always that thing and i would say like other than that in my future as well if I, when i'm i will be working i will i am going to work into a process development so in that thing as well i in my i don't think so i will be directly anywhere near to the plant i would be somewhere in like development of that phase or development of the device from r and d to a big scale something like that so every like uh, if you see about that there is not always that uh, you will be working into a plant i would say like same into like many different industries in semiconductor industry as well like disha might help you better in that field as well like yeah, it's not i was just going to add yeah <laughs> yeah i was just going to add that uh, so even if i work in a semiconductor industry i pretty much work on my computer <laughs> i pretty much work on things that are already automated in the industry um so for example uh, the chips you get you get it from wafers so everything is automated if i want to send one wafer to some process or remove it from some process or do anything i can or like work from here and things will happen there so uh, it is not necessary that uh, you have to always uh, work in in an in a chemical plant or a fabrication unit yes you might get an exposure to it but um, it is quite interesting to see how the world is growing and how things are getting automated and even with a chemical engineering degree uh, there's so much you can do as priyanka said that uh, you can uh, pretty much do anything and you can make an impact in this world so um i think after my undergrad i realized that okay there's there's environmental as well where you can go in there's um, energy storage there's pharma there's the food industry right uh, so there are pretty much a lot of fields you can go in and it is pretty diverse so choose your career path according to what interests you and uh, from there just take one step at a time and uh, you'll see that okay you know you can do the elimination process moving forward that okay this interests me this doesn't how do i reach there right so keep a goal in mind that okay this is what i want to do in the future i don't want i probably want to go uh, do something hands on so you know chemical engineering can give you that and if you don't want to do anything hands on you want to sit um, at the comfort of your home and work you can do that as well so yeah one step at a time that's my message and i have learned it the hard way So yeah, one step at a time. Thank you. Hello. Yes, yes, Actually, yes. Um, I wanted to ask on what basis did you take the chemical engineering? Pardon? Yeah, yeah. On uh, what factors did you take the chemical engineering? Yes, yes. Part? I can start. It's it's kind of a so, funny. Amish, uh, so is it fine if he if he speaks in English or he should answer in Hindi? No, I'm fine with English as well. Yeah, okay, okay. Yes, Amish, continue. Okay, uh, thanks. So it's kind of a funny answer because when I was uh, just out of the high school education, um, I basically wanted to solve climate change, <laughs> um, and from my research, what I understood was that chemical engineers work on systems. Uh, that basically do different kind of things and um that was basically my motivation that uh, i want to design systems that will not uh, emit this amount of uh, carbon dioxide or this amount of uh, uh pollution in uh, in the atmosphere and um i'm kind of Uh, doing uh, emissions control related research right now uh, and my research is basically applicable to diesel engine exhaust systems so just treating gas that comes out of diesel engines and making sure it's not uh, harmful to um, to the environment um, so that was basically my motivation to do uh, or get into chemical engineering it sounds very niche or uh, 
or not niche but cliched i would say um but i as naive as i was i think i made the right decision and picked the um field that still interests me very much so uh, i hope that helps you understand uh, or solve your question yeah i also wanted to ask that whether the subjects which you are studying in 11 12th are they related to the courses which you do in au um i can take that up so um in 11 12th we basically study about inorganic and organic chemistry when it when it when it comes to chemistry we study about the surface chemistry and uh, we do a lot of math a lot of integration differentiation i'm not sure if we did for your transform but yeah a lot of math basically and uh, um can like those courses definitely helped us uh, initially to uh, build a foundation but uh, you know when you move on to your uh, second year so first course first year i think uh, we learned a lot about basics uh, and uh, the knowledge which we gained in our 11th and 12th standard uh, that kind of helped us to learn about the next level of that course and then eventually we started learning about uh, the core chemical engineering so yeah that those were really helpful and the foundation if your foundation is pretty strong that kind of helps you move forward i'll just add to that um what you are learning right now is basically the very fundamentals of scientific analysis so you are learning uh, about uh, mathematical formulas or i would say how to conduct math right um and you are learning about things like units and stuff like that all of those fundamentals will really help you get through your engineering program because your brain will uh, focus more on to how to apply uh, things at higher level and the very basics that you are learning right now they will be helpful in any kind of uh, engineering program as far as the science related courses are uh, concerned okay so here let me answer your question from a you know faculty point of view uh, maybe right now you are studying chemistry and maths all separate now when you come to a for let's say chemical engineering there will be course like uh, uh, reaction engineering which is taking part and the integration of chemistry and maths so it's about how do you solve a chemistry problem using maths and then you apply it to make a bigger company okay so this how that's how we keep on integrating the fundamentals of 11th and 12th which is mostly physics chemistry and maths another example is you are keeping physics and maths separate now when you are let's say you are designing a air conditioner there comes the role of physics and chemistry and maths all together and also a part of thermodynamics a major part of thermodynamics is been taught to you as a part of physics now thermodynamics itself is a different world yeah, which we get to realize when we enter chemical engineering okay so this is now we are kind of you know uh, you know getting explosions of multiple levels of chemistry physics and maths and everything is getting entangled while you are solving a bigger problem and we are not solving a problem for a very small population we are trying to figure out what is happening for a population of billion of people how do you solve that okay so any i think not only for chemical engineering even for any uh, you know discipline of engineering the basic planning or basic strategy works like that you take out the fundamentals of physics chemistry and maths and how do you solving a bigger situation or for, for a bigger population or maybe for environment or maybe for production or whatever field you want i think i i answered your question yes thank you so much any any other question please okay 
So, Amish uh, means the everybody, Drashti, then Disha, Shagar, Jankruth, and Priyanka. So, we are very thankful to you uh, for, for your time. And I, I know for Disha and Drashti, it is very early morning, maybe around 3.30 or 4 a.m. in the morning. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we, we will uh, coordinate similar alumni interaction for the um, is the present students separately also. So that uh, I think that would be more technical. So this uh, was the general uh, question answer. And I would like to thank all participants, uh, even my colleagues and my students also. So thank you very much. And goodbye, everyone. So, Rahul Bhai, Mr. you can end. The thank you, everyone, for joining. Yeah. And, uh, you know, thank you so much. Thank you your information and uh, experience. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joan Bajan. Stop running. Are you going to studio? Are you going to go to the studio? I'm going to go to the studio. No, I'm going to go to the studio. I'm going to go to the studio. Um, but a YouTube is probably the one. Stop running. Make one idea. Mute Carbella, Zoom Mute Carbella. Mute Carbella, 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 Mute